Sandy, we've talked a lot about dating. We've talked a lot about the challenges of dating in midlife. Let's talk about you. How about that? <laughs> so sure. tell me about how you became, why did you decide to become a dating coach? Well, I was a dating disaster <laughs> before I became a dating coach. Well, there you go. Yeah, most of us make our mess our message. And I had been divorced after a 23-year marriage, and my marriage was really an unhealthy marriage. And when I got divorced, I said, you know, I am going to find out how to do better next time. I also became a certified life coach. That was part of my growth as a person, is to find the profession that really spoke to me and helped me make an impact in people's lives and in the world. And in, in the study, and I just started to realize that I, um, that I, was re I actually was good at, at helping other people date before I started dating. I was walking with a friend every day, and, and one day she called me a man whisperer because I really understood men. And it was just sort of natural. I, I, I also, in, in learning to be a certified life coach, I learned how to set goals. I learned what values were, you know, how to, how to identify core values. These are all important to dating. I didn't even know dating coaching was a career until I started Googling it. I was just going to ask you. I mean, you're, you're kind of a unique category. There are a lot of us, yeah. but I didn't know that mm -hmm. this was actually an option. And, and I don't mean and matchmakers, I mean coaches. Yeah, right. coaches yeah. Who, who help people make their own matches, mm -hmm. really. And I, I didn't want to see anybody else suffer through bad relationships. There are, there are skills you can learn to learn to communicate better, to, to become more confident, to, to, to learn how to flirt, to all these things that I didn't know anything about when I got married so many years ago. So that's really how I got into it. It's really amazing the amount of mistakes that people make. Like you think it's so natural to mate and it's so natural to flirt. But so, you know, what are some of like the major surprises? Like have you ever been shocked by things that your people have told you? Shocked by things that people have told me? I, I'm shocked by the kinds of conversations yeah. I have with men. Yeah. <laughs> They're just like who say things that are bizarre. I'm trying to think of a particular situation. I wasn't uh, sure if there was any like patterns like that, you know, you think people, I always say you never know what goes on behind closed doors. People seem normal and then they have interesting choices of what they want in a partner or interesting behaviors or things like that. Well, there's a lot of kinky right. stuff that's yeah. out there that shocked me. Yeah. Um, I had a situation on Tinder, which right. got me off Tinder, right. where somebody asked me if I was into the same fetish he was and he told me what it was and I had never heard of right. it. I had to look it up right. and I was like, okay, I don't think I'm going to be on this right. site for now. Well, how do you coach people though when they have you know, when they share with you that this is what they're looking for, or whatever fetishes they have, or something. I mean, fine, put it out there. Challenge. I mean, I right. gave him credit for putting right. it out there. It just wasn't for me, right? Which is fine. And he actually connected with me again on another site, and I went, "Okay, we, we've talked before. <laughs> I'm really not into it's your a short fetish. memory." Besides, yeah, he right. goes, "Oh wow, I remember you." Right. So yeah, I mean, I think own your stuff. Mm -hmm. Like, if you know you need this or you want this, then be good with it, and then find the person who wants your crazy thing. You know, it's it's the truth that about everything in dating. Like if you if you are a person who wants sex once a year, find somebody else who wants sex once yeah. a year. It's not about like sexual com compatibility is much broader than just both of you enjoying sex or a frequency of sex. It could be, you know, how kinky are you? How how playful are you? Do you want sex in public and private? You know, there's just we all have different wants and needs, and the more we can be open about them, the more we're going to connect with the right people. So do you think there's somebody for everybody? I do. I do. And I think people give up too easily. I think that with a lot of bad dating situations and bad dates, people just say, there's nobody. And they make a lot of broad sweeping generalizations like, there are no good men, there are no good women, all women want men for their money, all men want, you know, whatever. It's just bad to do that. and. To just be open that all it takes is one. I think you have to keep that in your mind. It just takes one. It's a little harder at this age. And there isn't necessarily that one one as well. That there might be a few ones. Correct. Right, in terms of there might be a spectrum of what would be great. Yeah, I don't yeah. think there's one soulmate in the world. I, I think that we have many people who can come into our lives and, and connect and it's a great connection and maybe it's a temporary connection. So um, how do people find a dating coach? Do they find them? Usually right. Google. <laughs> I write a lot of articles, right. so they find me in my articles, and my YouTube. I mean, and your so website. It's your website. 
lastfirstdate.com. Right. Uh -huh. Yeah, so that's where people find me. But yeah, I mean, just Googling, people usually find, find me through that too. Yeah. And do people, should everybody get a dating coach? I think Besides the fact that you like your business to grow even more, but I mean, in all seriousness, because we get afraid to get coaches, we think that we know it. I think I got this handled, but yeah, I, and I think if you look at right. where what we hire coaches for, like a personal trainer who would help us to get to do exercises mm -hmm. that we wouldn't normally do on our own, that we wouldn't be as disciplined. So a lot of what coaching is is accountability. It's also perspective. We can't see ourselves, so we think that we're coming off one way, and we're really coming across in a very different way. So a dating coach who is kind will point that out to you and give you some solutions as to how to do better. I have many clients who have a history of abuse and they're looking to not have codependency anymore and not have a, an abusive relationship. So I help them by uncovering some of the past things and you know, really looking deeper within and then they can start practicing better communication, better boundary setting until they find the person who's right for them. That's great. All right, well, I'm so excited that you came to talk to me today. So thank you, Sandy Weiner. Oh, thank you. If you like today's Bottom Line Expert Minute with Sandy Weiner, then come to our website, bottomlineinc.com, and watch more, more with Sandy and more with our other experts. And what would be even better, share us. Share us on Facebook, share us on Twitter, share us on LinkedIn. Let everybody know about the great videos that we have for you with all the leading experts in health, life, and money.